The internet has made it easier than ever to start a business. Succeeding on the internet, now that's another story. The big question is, what are those who are succeeding doing differently? This podcast has the answers. Welcome to the Marketing Matrix Podcast. I'm your host, Lisanne Murphy, and I am here with the incredible, talented YouTube star, Steve Rakin. Steve, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Hey, thank you so much for having me on, and I'm really looking forward to adding a lot of value to your viewers. Oh, we are so excited. To be honest, you're our first YouTube guy that we've had on the show. So like you're, you're going to be our like, uh, our putting the flag in the stand, making the stamp of like what it, what it is possible, what is possible to do with YouTube marketing. We're just super, super stoked to have you. So uh, for those of our listeners that aren't as familiar with you and your story, I want to take a second to read a little bit about your bio. Cause that's like the, uh, the accolades, the inflation stuff, but then we want to get into the real story and have you tell us how you got to, to what you're doing today. So at age 21, Steve got arrested and went to jail. Kind of excited to hear that story. His life at that point hit an all time low. He was broke. He was 80 pounds overweight and he felt like he had no purpose. After that, he spent the next three years delivering pizza and waiting tables at Cracker Barrel, which I love Cracker Barrel, by the way, their fried okra is like, (laughs) the best. He finally realized he had to change his life and he couldn't keep living that way. He started a reselling business, flipping bicycles on Craigslist and making money on eBay. He started documenting his success on YouTube. And since then he's gained over 144,000 subscribers on YouTube, received over 16 million views, lost that 80 pounds guys, and made over $2 million from YouTube, eBay, Amazon, and beyond. He now lives in a dream luxury apartment in downtown Miami, Florida, which I've seen the balcony view, guys. It's on floor 48, right? Yeah, yep. <laughs> it's amazing. So floor 48 with his best friend, and he earns over 20000 a month profit. His life and his purpose and passion every day is to help these YouTube people, and he's doing affiliate marketing um, on those YouTube channels. So, Steve, we are so excited again to have you on the show today and uh, just really anxious to dig into your story and dig into the marketing that you're using in your business. So, again, thanks so much for coming. Hey, appreciate it. Let's get right into it. I love it. Before, before we do, though, I just want to like give a personal plug for Steve. So Steve and I, we met just a few weeks ago, and we've had the opportunity to work together um, with, with running Facebook ads for the business that he's doing with his best. Like, he knows his stuff. I, I've, I, I think, you know, I get on sales calls a lot, a lot, but I've never like been grilled by someone who's like so intense with marketing as like Steve, like he, did, he just knows what's going on. So Am I that intense? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you're not intense as like a, as a human being, but like you, you can tell that you've been around the block. So uh, it's, it's just awesome to have you here. So I love it. I would love to hear from, from your story. Like how do, how do you go from, from being arrested and put in jail to, to this being this YouTube affiliate superstar like how, how did this happen right it, it, it literally happened you know by accident so you know you had already covered a little bit about my story I, I you know I was hanging out with the wrong people I was you know I was selling marijuana and a lot of it I was doing to make money but also to you know kind of pay for my habit at the time you know I was smoking a lot hanging out with the wrong people essentially just trying to run away from all my problems and I used hanging out with the wrong people I used you know, smoking all the time. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day as well. I used food. Um, I used all of those things as a way to run away from what I knew that I truly wanted, which was to be healthy. I wanted to have a business. I wanted to help people and make a difference, but I just kept running and running and running. Well, eventually I'd gotten arrested, hit rock bottom. They threw me on probation, which is, you know, essentially, you know, a term that you serve, you're free in the real world, but you can't mess up or else you literally go to jail. Um, So I had to change my life. And I realized at this point, wow, I'm, you know, 20 something years old. I'm probably 22 or 23. A couple of years later, I'm on probation. I'm delivering pizzas. I'm working at the Cracker Barrel. I'm broke. I, you know, I I, I can't even take a girl out to eat because I'm I'm super, like, I want to date women. I want to have fun. I want to travel. I can't do it because I'm broke. And I say to myself, how much longer is this going to go on? And I remember this was, you know, I might've been 23 or 24. I, you know, I'd been delivering pizzas. I was working at the Cracker Barrel and you know all about the Cracker Barrel. You know how they have everyone wearing the aprons? Everyone's yeah, wearing the aprons. 
It's, yeah, it says like you're a one star or a two star. I was a one star. They didn't want to give me any more than one star and they probably could just feel it through my attitude. I wasn't happy. I wasn't going above and beyond because I really didn't want to be there. I remember sitting in the car one time and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. And I was scrolling through YouTube and I was looking at ways to make money online and I found this big jacked Asian guy who was buying and reselling stuff on Craigslist. He was flipping stuff on eBay. He was reselling online and the guy was healthy. He was fit. He was happy. He was living in Austin, Texas. He was making good money and he was living that life. And right then and there, I made that decision. And I was like, I'm going to learn what he's doing. So I started going out and buying and reselling stuff. And to make a long story short, I harassed this guy. I would post on his Facebook every day. Should I buy this? Should I sell this? Should I buy this? Should I sell this? And uh, eventually that first summer, I made like over $20,000 flipping bicycles on Craigslist. And about six months later, I had, I'd started my YouTube channel and sharing my, my doc, documenting my journey. And me and that big jacked Asian guy, we became business partners. So from there, everything started my YouTube channel, my online businesses. And what I did was I just documented my journey on YouTube. And that's where it started, you know, over six years ago. That is amazing. And I, I love how like you're, you are not the first person to say that it was, it was like they stumbled on it by, by just trying to document the journey. And I think sometimes, sometimes people are scared to document the journey because it means that they're admitting that they're learning or that they aren't, they, they don't know everything that they want to know yet. So like, what gave you the courage to, to document and put that out on the, on the web? So I think the biggest thing was gratitude. I was so freaking grateful that I had found this community of people. And at the time, this was six, seven years ago, there wasn't a big community of people selling on eBay and Amazon and reselling. And in general with marketing, all the different niches that we're all listening to on podcasts. Now, a lot of these didn't exist on YouTube. I didn't know that people were connecting on Facebook and YouTube. These things were also new. This was before Facebook Live, YouTube Live. None of these things existed. I started meeting people who were doing what I wanted to do, who were making money reselling. And I was so grateful that they were posting content on YouTube and that it actually worked. And I was going out there and I was making my parents so proud and I was putting money in my pocket and I was doing things legally and ethically. And I was able to go to sleep at night feeling proud of myself. I said to myself, I want to be able to teach more people. I want to be able to help more people. And it wasn't to make money because honestly, dead serious, I didn't know you could make money by having a personal brand. I didn't even know that you can make money with advertising on YouTube. I didn't know. I started this because I wanted to connect with more people because I knew that deep down inside, if I didn't want to go back to my old life, if I didn't want to go back to working at the Cracker Barrel and delivering pizzas, and if I didn't want to go back to college because I started going to college at the time, I've got to get around people who are on another level than me because I intuitively knew my path to success was going to be surrounding myself with the five people who I want to be like most. And that's, a, you know, Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn was Tony Robbins mentor, said you are the average of the five people you hang out with most. So I intuitively knew that and I just wanted to give back and I could honestly say if it wasn't for starting my YouTube channel, I probably would still be working at, in the restaurant industry because I never would have been able to get to that next level. So the help of others was huge for me. I love that. I love that so much. And, and something that we've talked quite a bit about on this show is the power of your network and a power, the power of coaches to help you, that, to, to like bring in coaches into your life that are where you want to be. And just how it doesn't like, there's no shortcuts to success, but it sure does take out a lot of time uh, for making all the mistakes because they can help you avoid the ones that they made on their journey. Yep. So what, talk to us about your YouTube channel. Like what, what, how was it growing and when did it, how did you finally get to a point where you realized that like, oh my goodness, like I can monetize this thing. Yeah. I can do something yep. with this. How, tell us about that. Yeah. So it took probably about six months until I even realized, because again, I didn't start my YouTube channel to make money. I wanted to help. I wanted to serve. I wanted the community. After six months, I realized you can make money by turning on Google AdSense, the, the AdSense program. And I turned it on. I started making like a couple hundred dollars a month. And I was like, oh, wow, I, I should have not, I should have learned how to do this because I didn't have it on for like six months because I was having so much fun. 
So that's when I first realized I started making a couple hundred dollars. I'm like, wow, this is actually significant to me at the time because I was still living at home with my parents. You know, I was 20, uh, 24, 25, I lose track of time and I'm living at home with my parents. I'm, I'm starting to make some decent money. Um, but a couple hundred dollars a month extra was big. So at that time I'm like, okay, now's a, here's a reason to really continue to publish content. I'm, I'm getting a following, I'm building relationships. Now I'm making a couple hundred dollars. So I started really pushing more content. I improved my quality. And that's why it's so important. I want to, I want to put this as a prerequisite. There's a lot of people who they don't think it's important to have to monetize your channel or monetize whatever platform you're on, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> but um, you do have to monetize it and you have to find ways to increase your monetization strategies because when you are able to monetize, you're able to put more time and more effort. And people are going to follow you because of the value you're able to give. If you're not making money from your YouTube, from what other platform, you're not going to put the time and effort into it because you're going to have to spend your time elsewhere trying to pay your bills. So after about six to 12 months, I was making a couple hundred dollars a month and I started getting a lot of questions. And this is huge for anybody who starts a YouTube social platform. You're building a following. You want to keep your ear down to the ground. You want to listen to what people have to say. And at the time I was sharing and documenting my journey of selling clothing on eBay from thrift stores. I was making two, three, 4,000 a month going to thrift stores, buying clothes and polo shirts and jeans and vintage items and hats and belts. And I would go and I would flip all this stuff on eBay. I kept getting the same question over and over again. What are the best brands to buy and sell? What are the best men's clothing to buy and sell? How do you buy and sell blazers and sport coats and suits? And I would make videos, but people would want more. They wanted a step-by-step -step tutorial. They really wanted, you know, my time. So I said to myself, you know, I'd, I never made more than a couple thousand dollars a month profit. I said to myself, I should make a little ebook. And I found this website called Gumroad, gumroad.com that allows you to create a digital file and upload it. They handle all the payment processing. They give you like a simple landing page. You don't need a website or anything. And um, I learned about this because I was watching this guy named Glendon Cameron who was making money selling his eBooks. So I said, I'm gonna try to do that. So I created this little word file of the top 101, what I called killer clothing brands to sell on eBay. <laughs> and I put this little document together and I turned it into a PDF and I just put it together and I, I put it for sale. And over the next six to 12 months, I made like well over $25,000 from that ebook. And it was huge because Gumroad only took like two and a half percent. This was all organic, Lisanne. I'm not spending money on Facebook ads, YouTube ads. I don't even know what ads are. This is how ignorant I am. I just didn't know. And I was just creating content about selling men's clothing. And what I didn't realize at the time was every time you put out a piece of content, think of it as a magnet. It's, it's attracting people to you. So I kept creating and documenting my journey of selling clothing on eBay and all these people would follow me and I would shout out, Hey, if you want to learn more, I've got this ebook link in the description. And I was doing all this weird corny marketing stuff, but it worked. And um, I started making thousands of dollars and I created ebook after ebook. And, uh, you know, after about a couple of years, I had done well over six figures selling ebooks and my whole mindset have shifted. And then I learned about affiliate marketing and that's a whole nother story that made me a lot more money. I love it. Well, you can't stop there. So, okay. So were, were you, were you actually selling the ebooks or the ebooks or were the ebooks free? And then you, and then you got them onto your channel and the AdSense is what made you the money. Like how, how did that act? How did you actually make money from the ebooks? Listen, I had no idea what a lead magnet was. If you would have asked me what's click funnels, what's lead pages, what's, what's a lead magnet, I would have said, huh? What are you talking about? Yeah, I just put it up for $19.95, a little simple ebook. And I, I said to myself, that no one's going to pay more than $20. If I would have known better, I would have priced it at like $97. I probably would have made like way more money because sometimes when you price things higher, there's a higher perceived value. But I didn't know. I just put it up at $19.95. And every day, five or 10 would sell, like, like clockwork for years, <laughs> every single day. And then, I would, and then I learned about email marketing and I started building an email list. And that's when things really started to take off because every time I would send out an email, sales would like 10x. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. This is so exciting. Okay. So, um, and, 
were you a partner with with the uh, with Jack Asian guy at this point, or was that was that later on down the road? I get I get a little confused sometimes because I don't have the best memory when I think back to that. Um, but I I feel like I started this before I teamed up with him because we built out a membership site that was called the Green Room and it was a community monthly membership and people would get access to a Facebook group and we would interact with them and stuff. But I feel like I did the eBooks first. I'm pretty sure I had the eBooks first. And then at some time during the interim, you know, him and I, we had, we had connected and built that out as well, which made a lot of money as well. You know, looking back. That's amazing. Okay. So how did you discover affiliate marketing then? Cause that's, that's like yeah. your main bread and butter right now, right? Yeah. So right now um, I have, one at this moment right now, I have one evergreen product that I promote as an affiliate that makes anywhere from, you know, right now the last 30 days is like over $7,000 in profit with just one evergreen, um, affiliate offer. And, um, uh, my, my, my buddy who has the course, he has it on teachable. So he has a, it's a 200, I think it's a $297 front end product. And then he has like $197 upsell. I don't even know, this is how embarrassing this is. And I'm still like, I know marketing, but I'm really stupid when it comes to paid advertising, like really, really bad. That's why I'm glad you and I teamed up because I know we're going to take things to the next level. But this product is making literally anywhere from five to 10,000 a month. Sometimes it's only 3,000, but on average over the last year and a half, it's been like well over 5,000 a month profit. I'm making it just organically. Just I, me and him, we've recorded like 15, 20 videos. Some of the videos have like over a hundred thousand views. And the way that I, um, I think this will help a lot of people out is what I do is I create these videos um, with, with somebody, if I'm like promoting their course or something, if I'm not an expert in it. So I'll just, I'll just give you the full story. He runs a drop shipping business on eBay and Amazon. I don't drop ship at all. I don't really know much about drop shipping. I don't personally drop ship. I'm really good at thrifting, reselling, retail arbitrage, stuff like that. But him and I, we had teamed up and I brought him on my channel probably 15, 20 times over the last year and a half. And I interview him, I ask him questions, we create content, we add value. And what I do is I tell people, hey, if you wanna purchase this course, there's a link in the description. Or I say, hey, if you wanna get our free drop shipping training, we've done a whole bunch of videos together. I've compiled them all in one place. If you wanna get them, it's 100% free, link in the description. So. I think the way I'm making most of the sales are people are joining my email list. And then in my email list, I have an autoresponder set up where I'm sending them videos and content. And I'm also pitching them on the course and I throw in a bunch of amazing bonuses as well. So it's kind of embarrassing to admit, but like I'm making really good money off this one product and it's all organic. And I don't even know where the sales are like coming from. How bad is that? <laughs> We're going to fix that. I love it. No, but here's, here's what I think is amazing. So first of all, so do you, will you give your take on um, affiliate marketing? Like what is affiliate marketing? Cause you've said a couple of really interesting things. You've said like, it's amazing how, because you've taken the channel that you built, you're able to take someone else's product and benefit both parties. So like what, what, what is affiliate marketing? Yeah. So for me, I know people have different definitions, but for me, it's essentially promoting somebody else's product. And in exchange for you bringing the sale, you get a commission. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of the products I promote and I have another high ticket course I promote. It's an open door, closed door model. It opens a couple, you know, times a year, but essentially I promote their webinars. I promote their course. And if, if somebody purchases it through my special affiliate link, then, then I gain a commission. That's awesome. So the name of the game is, um, is traffic, right? It's, it's getting people to, to these offers through your YouTube channel and through your, your email list. So, um, you have, you have a lot of things going on, right? I mean, you have, you're, you're building your YouTube following your, and your channel's probably morphed over time. I'm imagining in terms of like the type of content or like, is it always just been reseller stuff? Or? Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely morphed into a lot of various things just based on, you know, my interests and where I, where I kind of want things to go. But yeah, it's, it's always developing. So how do you, how do you keep things organized? Cause I know that's a big question for a lot of people in terms of like, cause there's lots of different ways to be successful and to make money. And you've even talked about quite a bit, like as you've just been in your journey, you're just trying the next thing that you 
you stumble upon or learn about from a mentor? Right. So how do you, how are, how are you keeping things organized? Like what's, what's the strategy right now with the show? Yeah. So for, for YouTube, do you mind if I talk a little bit about staying organized with YouTube? Yeah, let's do it. For me, the big thing is batching. Batching videos is, is a really uh, big thing for me. So for example, um, I have this new partnership that I formed where um, I'm promoting one of my buddies course about how he, over the last three years, he's sold over a million dollars worth of sports cards on eBay. So he has this mentorship that's like a couple thousand dollars worth. And um, I know in order to sell that, we're going to need a lot of content because on my, ch my channel, like creating the content is the currency. I need, I need valuable content. So what I did is I had him come over to my, my place in Miami and we recorded eight videos in one day, eight videos in one day. So batching is big. If you get all the videos at once, even if you're running a podcast or anything, batching is huge. Secondly, having a team in place is really important as well. Now I, now I know not everyone can afford a team, but what keeps me organized is I've built a, a lot of, SOPs, which are standing operating procedures and systems in my business. So for me, I'm able to put out a lot of content because one, I batch a lot of content. Two, I have a team in place. And three, we have a system for, for how to handle the input and then how to turn that into output. So we work off of Google Sheets. We have an entire system on a Google Sheet and think of each column kind of as like an assembly line. So you have column A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And each column represents like the assembly line in terms of you've got the YouTube content and then it's getting republished on Instagram and then stories and then it's getting republished. Now we're moving into TikTok, which I know Lasan is a huge fan of. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, the various platforms. So, you know, we work off of a spreadsheet. I have a team of video editors, graphic designers. I have a manager who helps with uploading and titles and descriptions. And I know it's super overwhelming now and you're like, Steve, how is this going to help me? But I'm just being 100% honest with you. It took a long time, but getting a team in place to help with the process is really important because I don't think a lot of people understand how much work it is to build a personal brand and to have your monetization strategy, you know, reliant upon organic traffic. And, you know, that's been my whole strategy this whole time. All the income I've made for the most part has been just from my personal brand, from the value I've given to my followers. So I think that's the biggest thing, batching, having a team, building systems in place, and just taking the time sometimes. Sometimes you got to take five steps backwards to take a step forward. Sometimes you have to take those five steps back it looks like you're, you're going backwards because you're not publishing a lot of content, but you're building out these systems and these templates and you're training designers and video editors, which you can hire so cheap um, on, you know, for video editing and, and, and graphic design on websites like onlinejobs.ph and um, upwork.com. So you can put together a really high quality team on a budget and um, you can really leverage your time doing the things that are the most important, which as a YouTuber with a personal brand organic, it's creating content. I love it. That's amazing. So, so what is, what is your content strategy? It's like you, you batch the creation, but like what, what is your, like, do you have like a, a schedule that you create once a month or like, like what, how do you, how do you get your content up on YouTube? Yeah. So right now we're publishing three videos per week, like a hundred percent. So all the batched videos that we do, I think of those as almost like good faith videos. So I try to put out at least three videos a week that are adding value, adding value, helping people making a difference. So we have a whole system in place where my team, we publish Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I like to keep, I've, I've experimented in the past with having like everything super planned out, but with my personality type, I don't really like to do that because I've realized that it's hard for me to make really amazing content like pre-planned in advance. So like you've, you probably learned a lot about just working with me. Like I'm, I'm on the fly, like I'm creative. I'm always like, I like to just, if I get a thought, like I want to do it right then and there. So I leave my schedule open for the rest of the week to create live streams, to do videos that I'm passionate about different things that come up. And, uh, it's not like super, super duper organized and systematized, but we do three times a week. And then a lot of times I'll post another two or three videos just based on the fly of what I'm interested in, what I'm, what I'm passionate about. So how did you learn like how to, um, to tell, tell a story? Like, like, are you just like, you just get on and say, Hey, I'm thinking about this and blah, blah, blah. or like, or do you like have like a, like a format that like you follow with each episode? 
Yeah, so it really depends. I experiment with a lot of different types of content. A lot of it depends on the type of content and your audience. So for, you know, for the viewers that are watching, I'm assuming a lot of them are huge into marketing, making money online, business, entrepreneurship. I've noticed that a lot of those videos and things are always changing, but I notice a lot of those videos do really well if you're straight to the point and have like seven tips, six things to keep in mind, five mistakes. So some of my best videos have been based upon just modeling other people. And for me, I guess the story, like being able to tell a story just kind of comes with practice because I was like one of the worst people to ever record videos. When I first got started, I would, you know, re-record my videos 10, 15, 20 times. Now I just don't care. So I just, I just do the best I possibly can. But I like to, I feel like one of the best ways to organize your videos is to pre-plan it a little bit in advance. So for me, it's just writing down the bullet points of the, you know, the main topics that I want to hit to be able to, you know, fulfill my promise, whatever the title is on your video, it's almost like a promise. So five tips to make more money on eBay, that's your promise. People are coming there for that. So for me, I like to hook them in the beginning, get them really excited and then add the value nice and organized, try not to waste their time too much and uh, you know, fulfill the promise. So that's like probably like one of my best strategies right there, but I'm always experimenting. I'm always trying new things. I love it. So, and how do you actually collect email addresses from the YouTube channel? Yeah. So I use a service called ConvertKit and uh, they're really good. I love ConvertKit. I've been using them for probably, you know, well over five years and um, there's different ways. There's verbal call to action. So you can say, Hey, go to rakingprofit.com forward slash Facebook to get my free Facebook template, which I don't have a Facebook template. So don't go there. Um, but you can verbally call it out. You can have your editor edit, edit the call to action on the screen as well. You can put the link in the description. There's a card that you can have that pops up, which is just an annotation that you can have pop up on the screen. But for the most part, I usually just have the link in the description, first line description. And I like to just call it out. Hey, if you enjoyed this content or Hey, if you want to learn, you know, five more tips to be able to take your business to the next level, I've got a link down below. It's hundred percent free. Just put your name and email in there and we'll send you over the good stuff or whatever it is. So um, that's probably like the easiest way to do a call to action in YouTube, which is much simpler than other platforms because you have, you have that area to put the, put your call to action. Whereas with, Instagram and stuff. It's a little more challenging. Yeah. I love that. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. So what are, to give us a view into the mind of Steve Rakin right now. Like what are some things that you're trying right now with your YouTube channel to, to grow it into monetizing that you're just, you're testing and, and just seeing what's yeah. happening. <clears throat> yeah. So right now I've actually been going through um, quite a few challenges with my YouTube channel just to be a hundred percent transparent my YouTube channel has been performing really poorly over the last two months, like really, really poorly. Um, I mean, views are down like over 50% over the last couple of months. And I think this is a trend that's going to be going on with a lot of platforms. I know this happened with Facebook. I know with Facebook, it happened hor like so many content creators got crushed because you know, Facebook now it's pay to play. You don't pay then you ain't gonna be playing in the sandbox. And I feel like YouTube's turning into the same thing right now. Um, so for me, I'm really just trying to be laser focused and I'm trying to get more into like storytelling. I'm trying to get more into really like being less of a talking head. I feel like being a talking head on YouTube isn't going to perform as well as it did before. I feel like on YouTube now, one of the things I'm really pivoting more to, and I'm trying to figure out how to do it because I just moved to Miami and my life's a little bit different and things are changing, but I'm trying to figure out how can I, how can I document and, and show hands on how to, how to achieve whatever it is I'm teaching, whether it's making money on eBay or Amazon. I just feel like on YouTube now, the whole talking head where you're just, you're just a head talking and you're just teaching them like, do this, do this, do that isn't as effective anymore. So it's, it's funny that we're talking about YouTube right now, but I've been actually looking into other platforms because for me personally, I've been having a really hard time um, gaining subscribers on YouTube over the last couple months. So I don't know if it's because of all the current stuff that's going on um, or it's just a shift in my audience. But this is a big lesson that you know I wanna talk about is when things get tough, your character is truly defined. So I'm actually in a, in a 
point right now in my YouTube where I'm trying to figure out what's the next step? What's the next thing that I should be doing? Should I be focusing all my time on YouTube? That's why I just started up my TikTok account. I've been putting a lot of systems in place for Instagram because I don't know what is necessarily going on with YouTube. It's really, really weird right now. Hmm. That's really interesting. I appreciate your vulnerability and transparency in sharing that. And, uh, but I love how like your mind, because you're so creative, your mind is always going and thinking, okay, well, like the, the traffic is somewhere. So like, how do we step in front of it in, in a better way? Whether that means- and That's like, why I've been, yeah. And that's why I've been looking into paid traffic as well, because I feel like over the last couple of months, I've been trying new things. I've been trying to experiment with like different styles and like screen recording and talking head and showing and interviews. And I'm like experimenting and just, it seems like the last couple of months, nothing's been working on my YouTube channel. And I don't mind sharing this because I have nothing to sell. Like I really don't care. Like I just want to add value to people right now. And it's like, I'm trying to figure out what do I do? Like, am I going to keep bashing my head against the wall, creating this YouTube content, YouTube content, it's not getting a ton of views. And then I go over to platforms like TikTok or Instagram and like the views are exploding over there. So, you know, I know there's different reasons to be on these other platforms and some things to look out for, but uh, I don't know. I'm definitely going through some growing pains with YouTube. And it's interesting because over the last four or five years, I've been growing two to three to 4,000 new subscribers every single month for the last four years. And over the last two months, it's dropped down to like three, four, 500. So it's interesting. I don't know. Maybe you have some advice. I'm not sure. And maybe some of the viewers, I don't know if there's a comment section after this podcast, but I would love your advice. What do you do in your business or in your life when things get really tough and you're just bashing your head against the wall, trying to figure out how do I get it to work? How do I get it to work? And you're just not getting the result you want. So that's just an interesting growing pain that I'm going through. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, and I think that, that we all have to realize that um, just how, like, like, like these channels are always growing and evolving, you know, like, like my, my realm to play in is Facebook ads, right? But even, even that platform, right? Like every couple months, Facebook will come out with some sort of change that shifts the algorithm and all of the media buyers are like, oh my goodness, like my ads aren't working anymore. And we all like, you know, huddle together and figure out like, okay, how did they change it? And how do we get it, the ads to work again, you know? And it's the same thing with every channel, like, because like these, these channels are amazing because they're bringing people to a platform where we can, where we can get in front of them and get their attention and share content and, and make a difference in the world. But they also are changing without telling us and things like that. And, and, and so it can be, it can be challenging. I'm, I'm not offering advice. I'm just sharing that. No, I, and this is the nature of social media. You know, it's, it's, it's the real, yeah. it's the real truth. Things always change. You know, I've been in business for over six years on all different types of platforms from YouTube to Facebook, to Amazon, to Kindle publishing, to drop all the different business models and things are always going to change. The question is, are you going to change? Are you going to keep trying to do the same thing over and over again and inspect, you know, a different result? So we need to be willing to change in order to change our results. So, you know, it's, uh, as, as I'm sitting here and I'm kind of like, oh, why? Well, I'm like, I'm almost like lately, like my, my roommates, like stop whining. Cause I've been like whining about YouTube because he's like sick and tired of hearing me whine. I'm like, I don't know what to do. He's like, Steve, shut up. Like, yeah, your YouTube channel is not doing well, but you just had an affiliate promotion and made 140,000 profit. You brought in $280,000 from your YouTube channel. Why are you crying? And I'm like, my views are down. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. But it's, it's, uh, you, you gotta, it's always this balance between gratitude, but nitpicking the things that need to change, yeah. you know? So, uh, I love that. It, it, it's always good to have a, I have a roommate like that as well, that when I'm whining about something, she's like, okay, <laughs> first world entrepreneur problems. Like, right, right. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Well, Steve, I always, I always love to, to end our longer interview with this question. And, and I think it's, we, we've already started to make that segue, but that is, what is the biggest internal transformation that you've experienced in this entrepreneurial journey? I think the biggest thing that I've, that's helped transform me. And one thing that I've realized is business, online business, making money online, learning Facebook ads, paid traffic, organic traffic, from struggling YouTube channels to months that you don't make a lot of money. Every single day, every single month, every single week, it's a stepping stone to something. 
a lot of times we get our we get down on ourselves and we're not happy with our results and we're we're beating ourselves up or, or maybe we start a business and we say you know I don't know if I want to do this the rest of my life but looking back over the last five or six or seven years every single day and week and month has been a stepping stone to something bigger something better a new learning experience and regardless of where you are right now maybe you're crushing it maybe you're not maybe you're getting started just realize that as long as you keep learning and you keep surrounding yourself with the right people and you're taking action and you, you give yourself a break from time to time, you never know what that next stepping stone is going to be. And I've had friends of mine and myself personally, I mean, my finances, my life has changed so much and I never would have, I would have never real, I never would have known like looking back, like I just never would have known like I'd be here today if I didn't have faith in the next stone that I had to step on. So just keep going. And uh, it's, it's a journey that's really exciting and rewarding. I love that so much. And, and I think it's really important to have that perspective. I think sometimes I catch myself feeling like, oh, if I could just like wrap this thing up and get the system dialed in with it, then I don't really have to think about it anymore and it'll just work. But like every system is evolving. Every, every, every social channel is evolving. Like we are evolving as human beings. And because of that, like mm. our business is this like breathing thing that is changing and we have to feed it differently. And, um, so I really appreciate that reminder. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me on. This was a ton of fun and I hope, I hope it inspired and motivated and educated some people and uh, helped them to take that next step. I love it. It for sure will. So Steve, how can people find you online and follow you? Like give us, give us the, uh, the, the 411 on where we can find Steve Rakin. Yeah, for sure. So uh, YouTube at Rakin Profit, R-A-I-K-E-N and Profit, just like you're making a profit. My last name's Rakin. So Rakin Profit, I'm trying to rake in the profit. That's the goal and help as many people as possible. So I'm on YouTube. I'm, I'm on Instagram. Just joined, just joined TikTok, which is very interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, would love to, if you have any questions or anything, send me a DM on Instagram and I would love to help you out if you have any questions. I love that. We're going to put the links to all your stuff in the episode notes and we're going to be pushing it and promoting it all week uh, when, when we have your episodes going. So Steve is also working on uh, getting us a training that he just did recently for you guys to get access to. So uh, that's going to be in the, in the marketing matrix toolbox. So we're super stoked to have that and appreciate your generosity in grabbing that for us. Cause I know it's, it's, Absolutely. it's going to be legit. So um, Steve, thank you so much for coming on, sharing value, sharing your story, being honest with where your business is and, and being willing to like share the successes as well as the struggles. It has just been an honor having you on the marketing matrix today. Hey, thank you so much. And it's been really great talking with you and it's been awesome working with you as well behind the scenes with, with the, um, the Facebook ads and everything. And uh, I can tell you right now, for all the folks who are listening, Lisanne and her team, they are rock stars. They're super organized. And that's like one of my pet peeves I was talking about behind the scenes. Like I need to work with someone who's organized. I need to work with somebody who's confident. And anytime I throw a question at Lisanne and accidentally intimidate her, she is like a rock. So I appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to working more with you as well. And that's just straight from my heart. So. Oh, well, I appreciate that so much. At the, guys, at the time of, uh, of recording this episode, we actually just launched Steve and his roommate Avery's ads last night at midnight. And I woke up this morning to having them run for about, they were running for five hours. It took about three hours to get approved. They've been running for like five, six hours now. And they are just crushing it. Uh, they're, they're already doing so great. So we're so excited to see how that, how that goes down for them. So, Sweet. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Steve.